I will never forget the time that Ryan and I were out to eat up in the Napa Valley. We asked for some gluten-free bread to start with and they brought us out Brazilian cheese bread. Ryan had never even heard of it before, let alone tasted it. And at first bite, his eyes lit up and he asked me if I could get into the kitchen and try to recreate it myself. After a few tries, I think we nailed it. Although I do think I might need to get to Brazil and taste the real thing. This is pretty amazing and I think you guys are gonna love it. Okay, so we are going to start with a saucepan over medium high heat and I have some melted ghee, water, full fat coconut milk, like out of a can, just make sure you shake up the fat and the water so it's all incorporated. And just a tiny bit of apple cider vinegar. So we want to let that come to a boil. Just whisk it all together to incorporate the ghee into the milk. Okay, and meanwhile, I'm going to finish grating my Parmesan cheese. So after trying a few different cheeses, we found that freshly grated Parmesan cheese is the best bet. From what I have read, the type of cheese that they use down in Brazil is actually a little more similar to a mozzarella, but our cheeses are pretty different here in this state, so Parmesan kind of seems to be the way to go. Definitely, I think a harder cheese gives it a bit of a better texture, and I just love the flavor of Parmesan. It's salty and it's really kind of strong and it's also got this nutty flavor that I think is really familiar which I think is probably why the majority of the American recipes for this bread call for it. Okay so this is boiling we've got our cheese grated now we're going to move over here to our mixer and we're adding arrowroot. So the traditional recipes call for sour tapioca but I don't tolerate tapioca very well, so I'm using arrowroot instead. You can use whatever you'd like in this, but I actually prefer this version. I think that it gets a little bit more fluffy, not quite as gummy on the inside, but still has a really nice kind of stretchiness to it and crispiness on the outside. All right, you want this mixture to come to a boil, then you can turn it off and pour it right into our mixer, over top that arrowroot and sea salt. Turn your mixer on, and we're going to beat this for a couple minutes until it's cool to the touch. Not cool to the touch, but more room temperature just so we don't cook our eggs and melt our cheese immediately. I'm just gonna scrape down to make sure I get all of the root from the sides. So at this point, you'll start to see it kind of crumbly. But if you were to stop it and touch it, it's definitely gonna be kind of sticky. We'll add our eggs next. Okay, so we'll just add our eggs one at a time and beat in between until fully incorporated. Okay, so I turned it up to high because it was looking a little bit thin and kind of curdled almost, and I want it to be kind of this, you know what it reminds me of, honestly, if you've ever made Play-Doh with your kids, it's kind of what the beginning stages look like before it starts to cool off. It's pretty gummy, pretty stretchy, and kind of smooth, almost a little bit thicker than a cake batter. All right, now we have to add the best part, the cheese. So I'm going to do a cup and a half of this freshly grated Parmesan and just kind of pack it down. We also have the weight measurement listed for you guys in the recipe because depending on the grating size of your cheese or what type of cheese you use, it could make a difference. So if you have a kitchen scale, it makes it super easy. Just weigh it so that you make sure you have the right ratios. So mix that cheese in. Alrighty. There's our dough. So here in California, we just call this Brazilian cheese bread because it's a whole lot easier than trying to pronounce Portuguese version, Pau de Queijo, probably still saying it wrong, even though I've looked it up a billion times and asked my Instagram followers if I was saying it correctly. And as I started researching the bread, there's just so many different ways to say it in all different languages and countries because really all it is is bread of cheese or cheese bread. Okay, so I have two baking sheets lined with parchment paper and I've preheated my oven to 400 degrees. Now I'm just going to use this cookie scoop here. Really, you can make these whatever size you want. 
nine would say, the bigger the better, or he'll just eat 10 at a time. Just kind of roll them between your palms to make a nice, slightly larger than golf ball shaped piece of bread. And you can put these fairly close together. They do puff up, but they almost puff up a little more than out. I am going to put these in the oven right now because I don't want to wait to eat them, but you could also throw this tray straight into the freezer and then once these are frozen, pop them into a container, Ziploc bag, whatever you want, and you can just pull them out and put them straight into the oven frozen and bake up just, you know, a few at a time, which is really great as well. Oh my gosh, the entire kitchen is permeated with the smells of cheese, which is never a bad thing. I'm not going to even like have anything here to serve these with because they stand on their own. They're just these billowy clouds of salty, cheesy goodness, and they are so amazing. I will burn both my hands and my mouth if I try to eat these right now. Trust me, I have tried. So I'm just going to let them cool ever so slightly, and then you better believe I will be digging into them.